Good day and welcome to today's conversation podcast. Today we're privileged to host a media analyst, is a political analyst, is a veteran journalist, and a critic, a government critic, Kaseva Mashila Kaseva. My dear brother, welcome to today's conversation. Thank you very much. A lot of people just know Kaseva Mashila Kaseva. They see you on TV. They've seen your write-ups. Uh, you are among those veteran journalists in our country. And, uh, but they don't know who Kaseba Mashila is. Uh, just tell us about yourself. Well, uh, I think as a, as a storyteller, uh, I'm generally not supposed to be a story, as, as you know. <laughs> yeah, now that you ask, uh, I'm, I'm the ninth of uh, uh, ten children. Mm. My father was... Uh, George Shipwa Kaseba, born in uh, 1916, uh, died in 1973. Uh, he was born in uh, uh, today's uh, uh, Shibuyunji district. It used to be Chilanga and uh, just, just west of Lusaka, just about uh, 30, 35 or so uh, kilometers west of Lusaka. Uh, my mother is uh, Erika Katimbe. She was born in 1931. She's still alive. Uh, that is almost the same village, a minimal village, which started uh, 1919. Uh, that is, uh, it's now Chief Shakumbila. There was a chief called the Shangala, just west of Lusaka. Yeah, uh, so that is, uh, so I'm, I'm the, the ninth born and uh, nine of ten, and, uh, which is uh, seven boys and and three girls uh, went to Shaminimo School, just uh, just there in Shaminimo. Uh, Shaminimo School started in 1959. Uh, yeah, my firstborn brother is one of the first uh, to go to that school. And then I, I went to St. Paul's Secondary School, and then I came to uh, Evelyn Horn uh, for journalism and. Uh, I uh, got to Times of Zambia, worked for Times of Zambia and a few others, and then I uh, did uh, some of these short courses and, and a bit of travels and uh, a bit of uh, writings and readings and uh, outside curricular uh, uh, either work and uh, reading. Yeah, that's basically Where it. do you draw your inspiration from? Yeah, I think, uh, firstly, I, I think the, 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 qu the quality of journalism from a long time uh, in Zambia has been, has been uh, top notch until recently that we are now more or less talking about uh, uh, we, we, we want to regulate uh, the practice much more than the training. So there's so much talk about uh, the practice or the coverage of politics much more than the training. So the training, uh, well, I, I didn't just, I, well, it was, it was inspirational. I, I, I drew inspiration uh, from uh, uh, books and, well, I, I, there, was, there was an uncle, one of my, my mother's uh, uh, third born brother. I don't want to sound like I'm name dropping. <laughs> who mm. used to be uh, one of the, my father was also one of the very educated guys from his area. Yeah, yeah so there was also an uncle. My, who was, uh, I'm told he went to school with Penza. He was one of the big boys for Penza. And, uh, mm -hmm. uh -huh, and, uh, so uh, we, we, I got a very early exposure to uh, literature and from that man. Uh, by that time, in the early 70s, early mid 70s, uh, I 
think whatever happened, he had his books sent to the village. So we, we got a, uh, the, the, the publications of the time, the, for example, the, the, the Digest magazine, the Time magazine, the Newsweek magazine, the Step magazine, uh, which is the, the Obit magazine. So I, I got, before I could go to grade one, so mm. I, I, I had to go through all those things. Uh, I don't want to say I was self-taught and mm. I learned a lot of things before I could go to grade one and I, I was helping the grade threes, the grade fours with homework wow. As wow. before I could. So I, I kept telling myself, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. And, mm. uh, but I didn't, I didn't necessarily want to be a journalist. I wanted to be a scientist. Mm. Yeah, I think that is... I thought this was easy, talking, writing, because there were books and we were raised, for example, believing that uh, uh, there was a book in heaven and uh, the angels were secretaries who took down and there were, there were <laughs> diaries and things like that. And so uh, just writing a book, just to live life and just be a writer, I thought it wasn't something as, as serious. So I, I had interest in mathematics and I, was, I don't want to say I was good. And uh, so I thought, the science was the, the actual thing, and yeah, so that was my 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 beginning. Mm. And uh, so as I went to grade one, I as I passed, and I, I was quickly brought to. Uh, I was given some some holiday as 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 a way of recognition, and that's I think seventy nine. I think there was a circus. So I was taken to the circus. So I was taken around. I, the city to tour the city as they were mm. saying, oh yeah, well done, you've passed number one and things like that. And mm. Yeah, so that is what gave me that uh, that foundation in, uh, in in journalism or in literature, and uh, just just to be what, who I am today. Mm. Your practice, many people know you from your practice as a journalist at the times of Zambia. Just speak to that. Yeah. Uh, at times of Zambia, maybe we can start with uh, just how journalism was and what time, yeah. and what yeah. times of Zambia was uh, at the time. Yes, times of Zambia. Well, I think I, I went there when it was kind of going down, and what would be said is that uh, uh, times of Zambia was one of the the last papers to really it 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 should have been UNIP or government, but it's kind of fought for its space, right up to even Chiluba's uh, first term, uh, up to even uh, 95, 96. Uh, so Times of Zambia was kind of free, it was kind of professional, it was kind of, uh, so to speak, muzunguish. And so as I went there, I was clear that is what I was kind of going for, that uh, there was quality journalism and uh, uh, the English was good, and uh, the standards were still international in many ways. So that is how I, I made the decision. I went there and I got employed uh, uh, as a senior features writer, yeah, which is another story. And it brought a, yeah, so I, I uh, well, I didn't apply. Uh, I was, can I say, uh, head picked and. Yeah, so uh, that is how I worked there from, uh, I, went, I went there for attachment and uh, got employed and uh, from, which is 96 and up to 2002. With the coming of Mwanawasa, that is how I resigned and mm. left the Times of Zambia. Was so, there anything that motivated you to resign or you thought well, you could? Yeah, I think I, 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 I well, the Times of Zambia had, uh, if you recall, the Times of Zambia got involved in the presidential petition in publishing an edition. An, an edition, a special edition. Yes, that a special edition. Allegedly pedition, uh, 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 published for the northern part of our country. Yes, yes, mm. yes. And also the Times of Zambia was uh, involved in the third term debate and mm. uh, took a very strong position. And, mm. Well, I, I kind of took a, a counter position. And I thought that was not what the Times of Zambia stood for. Mm. Uh, and that is what uh, informed my resignation. Okay. Uh, then then uh, I was called by, by management that uh, I could give an exit uh, interview. And some of the editors called me. Uh, I think uh, by that time, 
you, you t yourself should have been associated yeah. with yeah, huh? yeah. So they yeah. called me and uh, they themselves, uh, after listening to me, they said, oh, even me, I'll be resigning. And uh, So everyone, uh, even the person who gave me the, from the human resource, I think she's, she's now big elsewhere. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, she resigned shortly after us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I thought that is how I left the Times uh, because I thought the Times had left its rails as, yeah. as being a professional paper and it had... Uh, in fact, there was a, there was a, a recent uh, survey done by Copper Belt University, and that showed that uh, indeed the Times had, uh, had moved, had departed from what it initially stood for. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I think that has to do with um, ownership, ownership, whether private or public. It has an impact, and I think that's why you and I have always fought for you know, press freedom, where there should be editorial independence. It doesn't matter who owns a newspaper, whether it's a private or it's public. Uh, but I think that is a continued fight because the owners of uh, this institution continue to exert influence on editorial independence uh, and on the professional practice of the personnel. Mm. Uh, where did you go after that? Well, I, I, I essentially went home, and I think I was just fed up. I, just, I went what I have tended to term internal exile. I just yeah. was just fed up. I, I got an offer just about then. But I hope not to get in trouble with the offers and rejections. I got an offer, I think, uh, from among them, the Post. Uh, I, I didn't want to go back into the media. And mm. The Post's position then was not, uh, uh, didn't have uh, a very strong uh, policy on, on feature writing. Uh, the Times of Zambia at, at the time, I think, uh, feature writing, and, uh, as, which is the same in line with what you're doing, yeah. uh, conversations, mm. because we are so much into news and hard news, and mm. yeah, and that, is, and that is what has fitted social media, and that is what has really destroyed our society and our people. And uh, sometimes I even get surprised how, uh, how much lack of uh, media awareness. There is, especially among lawyers. It's mm. so shocking, you know. So that is how... Uh, Why have you fingered out lawyers? Well, because we had a, initially we had a, a partnership with lawyers. Lawyers were very good. And like when you talk about uh, freedom of expression, and this, these are laws. Yeah. And we do law ourselves as, mm. as journalists. Mm. You need to understand law. Yeah. So I, I'm, 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 I'm wondering, how, how do you become a lawyer without understanding the media? Yeah. Well, you don't understand literature. You don't understand history, mm -hmm. for example. Mm -hmm. You don't understand the things. So how do you understand law? <laughs> yeah. 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 You really don't understand society and mm -hmm. how society functions. I'm, I'm using the word uh, just awareness or literacy, just, just mm -hmm. the basics, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So uh, I've seen that. I remember there has always been a partnership uh, with lawyers. I remember, I think, the first um, biggest reforms Minister of Information then was Deepak Patel. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember attending a conference by, which was chaired by, I mean, which was addressed by John Sango at mm -hmm. the time. Mm -hmm. I think it, was, it could have been organized by MISA or in association with PASA, mm -hmm. but you know, they worried about ethics and then they wanted more freedom, freedom of expression, and just to expand you know, the media space for the media. Yes. So you are right. There yes. has always been a partnership. Exactly. Lars, and and media associations yes, yes, work yes. together very, very strongly. The John Sango you're talking about, well, we had him at Horn. Yeah. If the talks he's giving as, as, at hotels, yeah. yes, and a couple of, Sakuiwa Scott and all these guys, okay, in training, okay? So you, we had that partnership which has dropped. The same way that as the country was fighting for for democracy, Mount 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 democracy yes. which was also media pluralism, mm. The media was also fighting for its freedom, and that's how the Post was born. For example, it was born from those who came from the Times of Zambia and the Daily Mail and the other places that said, well, the media too needs to, to take its freedom. Mm. An opportunity was born. The Post was born from the same garden house yeah. that bore the MMD, mm. and that is how the, the MMD is blue, the Post was blue, and there was that partnership. And so, the issue of uh, fighting for, for that independence and the freedom and uh, that, that, that's, that has, has, well, we, we have been 
totally derailed. We have been separated. And so the, the lack of uh, data awareness, as, as is happening today, uh, is, is, really, is really depressing that uh, uh, to fast forward. On the, on the training, what has gone wrong? Well, what I get to think is that not much has changed with the training. What has changed is the practice. It is the gagging of the media. Uh, so the freeing of the media. For example, you, have, you are going to have so-called access to information, yeah. which this, this is the Monakatwe, the Monakatwe Constitutional Review Commission. This is 1993 to 95 which is more progressive, which is more futuristic than what you have in 2024, 30 years later. So it is... The, what so in your view, what the Mwanakatwe Constitutional Review Commission proposed, which sat between 1993-95, the document was ready, became the Constitution in 1996. Of course, there were a lot of clauses that suffered in between recommendations and enactment mm. but you are saying it's far more progressive than the access to information which has become an act now yes firstly what we needed to do uh, which this is this is the this, this is the the, the bill mm. uh, the pf uh, uh, draft bill of rights that was defeated in uh, in the 2016 elections referendum mm. which picked from the monarchy uh, which, which picked from the Monakatwe constitution. Okay? Now, we are not having that conversation about uh, the Bill of Rights, which is the continuation of the freedom struggle or the society uh, ruling itself. So sometimes when I hear you, I, let me call you a politician, yeah. argue about a dictatorship, and I'm saying, why and so we we can we cannot even argue about dictatorship if we are not arguing about a constitution mm. if we are talking to a government that is not interested in a constitution constitutional mm. reform as an ongoing business uh, should have continued under this government the government that blocked the 2016 uh, uh, the draft uh, uh, Bill of Rights. The Bill of Rights, was it progressive? Yes, and uh, the, like I am saying, it is speaking from the Monakatwe. Okay? Mm. Now, uh, now, if you tell me, is the act regressive? Yes, it is. Uh, why don't we want to have laws come out of the Constitution? Mm. Why shouldn't a law come out of the Constitution? As it, so, the, the freedom of conscience, faith, belief, and religion, it must have somewhere. The Constitution creates laws and offices and so on and so forth. So the Constitution must say, let there be such a law. Because if a law does not derive from the Constitution, the Constitution itself says in Article 1, and which is Article 1 of the 1996 Constitution, yeah, I think it's the 2016 constitution, is not void. So you cannot dribble, you can't have access to information that is going to stand in contradiction with freedom of the press, which does not derive from the constitution. Why wouldn't you want to repair the constitution, reform the constitution, so that access to information comes from the constitution? Becomes a constitutional right. Yes, mm. yes. Mm. Okay. Because if you take the access to information to court, the, the court will, will, will rule that it's unconstitutional. Okay? Because the law must come from the constitution. Mm, mm. So why shouldn't the laws come out of the constitution? So when a person is not interested in a constitution, I cannot have a debate with him as to whether he's a dictator or not. Yeah, you know, this argument you are bringing is very fundamental. When um, the Minister of uh, Justice, Honorable Mulambe Haime, brought an amendment to the, I think to the Criminal Procedure Code mm -hmm. to remove the sentencing part mm -hmm. of judges, mm -hmm. 
where they sentence one to death, I said that the approach was extremely artificial because the right to life is guaranteed in the Constitution. And, and the death penalty, therefore, is derived from the Constitution. So there was no way in which you were going to amend subsidiary legislation mm. without attending mm. to the Constitution. Mm. I think that was a view that was held by many, many constitutional mm -hmm. lawyers. Well, firstly, the point is, so, is that the, the Constitution Review Commissions have a position on that particular matter, and which is to uphold the death penalty, which falls in line with the issues of gay rights and so on, and being a Christian nation, it's something to the Christians that falls in line with, uh, with the Bible. Okay? So, the Constitutional Review Commissions have repeatedly heard uh, petitioners or witnesses say they want the death penalty to be returned to be returned now here is what has also happened that this government will not say anything and which is what well, where they are really i can say they are constitutional themselves in 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 respect let me just illustrate one point the uh, article 12 has three parts the first one that you have just tabulated about death First, it's, it's about life. It's the protection of your right to life. Now, it's then prescribed where... Circumstances under which that death, life can yes, be taken where away. where life can be taken away. And one of which is uh, a punishment structure that ends with the, the death sentence. So there are other punishments. Now, secondary, it is the, the issue of uh, the abortions and so on and so forth, the, uh, they, they, that's, so there is an act that is supposed to derive from there on how a woman can abort or how a miscarriage and so on and so forth. The third one is the going to war and police arresting and killing criminals. Now what is happening is that we, we seem to have a discussion uh, arising from the president being arrested and... Uh, uh, well, which would, being arrested and charged uh, with, with treason, and which po uh, possible punishment is death. And the president emotionally says, oh, I think let's remove the, the death penalty. And that is, that is the basis of the removal of the death penalty. And the president has said that. So it's not me saying that or putting words in his mouth. The president has said that. No, fair to him, the issue of death penalty has been driven by campaigners from a long time. Yes, yes, yes. But um, in fact, it's good that you even referred to the Constitutional Review Commissions because of the pressure to remove uh, the death penalty. All, all Constitutional Review Commissions have actually tabled this as one of the questions to petitioners. Mm -hmm. Do you want a death penalty removed? Mm -hmm. Do you want a Christian nation removed? Do you want, you know, they do a structure. Yes, yes, yes. And like you stated consistently, our people have held that the death penalty is a necessary evil mm -hmm. as a deterrent, I think, against murderers and against these high crimes. Mm -hmm. uh, as a good governance issue, Nordic and Western countries have always pushed that we decriminalize this issue of death penalty. So other than the pe president's personal experience, I think he jumped on the so-called benefits he could yes, derive but, but, from the donors. I was just amplifying your yeah, point. Yeah, which is fine. Mm. But we, we also have uh, the issue of uh, decriminalization of uh, marijuana and other drugs, which the president has been against yeah. as a person. And if you recall, he was asked a question, because uh, he found a process already, if you're talking about uh, decriminalizing and uh, so on. Uh, he found a process mm. which he has frustrated. Yeah. The issue of marijuana and the, has been frustrated. Okay? Now, the point I wanted to, to, to bring in is that we are having... So the president, for me, he should have removed uh, treason as an offense and not deal with the, the death penalty. Mm, mm. Because the death penalty, like you say, as a, as a I'm, not, I'm not for it, uh, as a necessary evil, cut us for all sorts of crimes. And I think you have been following a story of uh, some, some uh, minor who killed a woman, robbed her, 
And then the court just said, no, you can go home. And, and yeah. there's, there's nothing to... The Chipata case. Yes, 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 yes. Mm. Now, the point I want to... Because the murderer was a juvenile, I think he was 17. Correct. So, the point I want to make is that we are not having a conversation about this, uh, the Wawa West type of gunslinging that the C5 are doing in the windows of the vehicle and gunning down people. There is no count. There are no names. Okay. Extra judicial killing. Exactly. The one you've the, raised the is a human rights abuse. Exactly, exactly. And, and in the 2022 uh, human rights report by the United States, to people they give money, countries they give money, mm. one of the conditions is um, your human rights record. So it's under that we are reviewed. Yes. And if you see that the crime by the, crime by the police have been cited, mm -hmm. the extrajudicial killings, what does C5 do and kill those opponents, and I mean those suspected thieves? And uh, the newspapers love that. Five criminals gunned down. Mm -hmm. Dangerous. They are suspects. Remember they are suspects. Dangerous. It's, it's, uh, dangerous criminals. Uh, uh, under normal circumstances, when you train your police very well, they are supposed to... Uh, uh, um, get stop. hold of yes. those criminals, disable them, yes. and then uh, allow the due process of the law to take place. Yeah. But C5 is known no. when they appear on the scene, they kill. Yes, and, you know, and, and there are many victims. So the state says mm. nothing about that yes. as regards, this is under the same article, this mm. is under article 12. Mm. There, the state says nothing. There is no national uh, uh, conversation happening on extrajudicial killings, exactly. for example. Exactly. Mm. Okay? So, they, they haven't rewritten, amended the regulations. Do you file in anything? What do you say before you shoot? I think for me, when I, like you are saying, when I covered riots and so on and so forth, there's a proclamation that gets said, can you move, in the name of the president, move or either throw tear gas, as in a countdown from 10 to 1. Okay. None of that is done. None of that is done. I was a victim. And exactly. Just, just, just the other day at Kawata, people must have seen that. Yes, yes, yes. Watched, you know, the police pushed us outside the, the police premises. They said, you can't be here at the police premises. We walked across to where ShopRite is. And, you know, we peacefully sat. The police still came to remove us. I, and uh, you saw they threw tear gas. No one read me I, the, 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 the requirement by the police to give you a warning. And they actually fired those AK-47 in the air. And I was so near the, the policeman that fired. I think they were trying to threaten me to the extent that my ear was, uh, well, I, I couldn't hear for, for over two weeks, you know, because that gun is quite well, very loud. Yes. Now you are, you are talking about a civil police that should issue warning, that should read you mm -hmm. your rights, mm -hmm. that should use the authority of the president mm -hmm. to disperse you, but none of that happens. Now, that is happening at a clinic, at a market, at a mall, at a residential area. Uh, as, as that happened to you, if you check my Facebook, I, I posted, I attended, HH was called there, and by then, Bama Road was two lanes. The UPND blocked the road. They didn't cross the road as you did. They blocked the road. And as HH came out, that is, uh, that is 2015, as HH came out, he did a road show from that place to the secretariat and addressed a rally in the name of a press conference. Okay? That is... He disrupted traffic. Exactly. He Blocked stopped the, traffic. Exactly, exactly. And then he marched to the secretary. Yes. And the police didn't yes, disrupt the, the, the pictures didn't. are there. You, yeah. can, you can check yeah. those pictures on my Facebook. I, I posted that as that happened to you. Yeah. Okay? Mm. So they are saying nothing to that. In fact, that brings me to my point. Is that the nation, uh, Kaseva, sees you very active at a private station called Prime TV. And you became 
a reference point, a critical point against government and government's misgovernance, gov government's uh, issues around corruption, and government's misrule. You were very brave in calling out the names of both President Lungu, ministers, um, and whoever you thought you know, was uh, abused. Because the, the weight is on the government all the time, because they're the ones we would in the law, they're the ones that are obliged to respect the Constitution. Uh, recently, we've seen you criticize this government heavily. So people might not understand. They thought you were UPND. Just speak to that. Yeah, I think, uh, firstly, the, uh, being a journalist, uh, I think uh, it's Chechi who says uh, the friendship, the relationship between the media and the politics is, is, is not good and it must be worse. Uh, I think you know that quotation. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, no, he's, he's, he actually amplifies it. He says, if the relationship between the media and the politicians mm -hmm. is good, citizens must worry. <laughs> yes. So, uh, what I tried to do, uh, bef well, I, I've lived my life uh, where I've, uh, as a free person. I've, I've wanted to be, I've taken my freedom. I've, I've, well, we, we, we've, we've, sometimes people have asked me, and, and especially under PF, people ask me, but why are you so free? Why are you so courageous? Why are you so brave? And I say, well, I think uh, I would not live in fear. Uh, courage is partly taught in journalism. And I think uh, the lecturers will tell you, some of the first lectures, that uh, if you're a coward, maybe try, is it physiotherapy? Or is it, uh, <laughs> uh, move <laughs> try, move the, uh, yeah. try other yes. uh, professions. Not yeah. media, because mm. uh, courage should be one of the attributes of uh, uh, so, well, I, I criticized HH, uh, for example, when he, I, I criticized uh, his negotiation. He, he got a bad deal from uh, the, the treason trial. Uh, he got a nolle when that was a negotiated settlement. And, uh, for example, one of the things that people kept telling me and criticizing is uh, the issue of uh, these peace accords and the CADA violence and so on. Uh, I, I didn't want HH to attend some of those uh, uh, peace agreements because he was saying he was a victim, which, uh, well, looking back, he wasn't. Because these cadres, for example, they, 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 they enforced what they called uh, self-defense, which was very aggressive, which was very violent. So when HH uh, was called to these uh, peace parties and so on and so forth. I didn't agree with him. Uh, but I, 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 when I looked at him, I thought he was signing anything, social contract, sign, mm -hmm. uh, peace, whatever. I said, no, he needed to, uh, as, as a negotiator, you can't negotiate peace if you are a non-combatant. Mm. So I, 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 I criticize HH. On the treason, you said his knowledge was negotiated UPND and others were happy that was out of prison. You, you took a different view. Yeah. You said um, uh, he, he should have been cleared by the courts, not through a knowledge. No, I mean, if, if they, they negotiated, the, the court, uh, well, he should have been acquitted. Mm. He mm. should have gotten an acquittal. Mm. Okay? So you can't negotiate. That's a bad negotiation. And this is, this is someone who was negotiating, uh, who was a, a privatization negotiator. Mm. So when I looked at him as, as a negotiator, well, right now, the, what is trending is the debt. Mm. Okay, the restructuring. So I criticize HH, uh, except, well, HH himself well, would get in touch with me and uh, would, uh, would acknowledge my criticism and some of his people didn't like it then, and even now they don't like it that I criticized. Uh, just like I criticized uh, uh, Lungu, and uh, I still criticize Lungu, but I, I, I feel right now uh, you cannot criticize someone who is in opposition. And it, well, I had, uh, I had as much as I could criticize of Lungu as anybody could criticize. Uh, when he was in office, yes, you, when he you was, took him on, yeah. yes, mm, and mm. at some at some point, 
I wanted to know whether uh, he was watching. And now, professionally, here's what happens also. Professionally, you cannot, if, if you're a professional, I think I once criticized you badly and Oh, you to me, me, you, you've repeated. No, not when you were in power, not when you know, not when in office, but yeah. when we were at times of Zambia. And I think there was a time when I, I took you on. Oh, yes, yes, oh, yes. You yes. remember that? I did, I remember. Okay. I did yeah, a no, story. Yeah, no, let's forget no, about it. No, 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 let's not forget about this <laughs> oh, conversation. Okay. No, I, I, I did a story. Mm -hmm. I think I covered um, a proponents of the third term. The, oh, the was his forum launch. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Oh, is it the one on the West's forum? Yes, yes. Yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's a story. Yes, yeah. I, I criticized you. I blasted you. Yeah, yeah. yeah but Besides, that, you were my senior. Yes, but that, that didn't end our friendship. <laughs> no, no, not at all. Not uh -huh. at all. No, I agree with the point. Yes, that, and that is... Over time, uh, you and I have been at opposite sides. Correct. Even when you have criticized me, our friendship has never dropped. No, which is the same with, uh, say, even Amos Chanda. Yes, yes. Okay. I, well, I, I, we have some kind of, so, we, is, is it not necessarily a ceasefire, or is, it's just, and then, and the point I'm making is that when you are professionals, it's nothing personal. Yeah. You yeah, actually even yeah. tend to, I, I, I did some series where I was calling Lungu long neck and Kamwidi necklace and, mm, mm. and we enjoyed that with the UPND. Mm. And, now, when you do that, as a professional, you end up liking your subject. Okay? Mm, explain the, that part, why it shouldn't happen. Why, why, you, should, why you end <laughs> why up Why you like, shouldn't like subje your subjects. Well, well uh, professionally, you, well, I think, like you're saying, uh, when, I think, uh, like we hammered Lungu so much on, uh, and which is why I'm, I'm I've been made comfortable to introduce myself and talk about my family. I, my mother is with me. She came over the same, the same things. And, yeah. I, well, I don't want to talk about myself so much. But I, No, today I, you're on the chair. Yes, yes, You yes, talk I, about others, today you're on me, the yes, chair. Yes, put me on the spot. I accept that. <laughs> uh, except I will not be there to boast and do it. <laughs> no, true, true. Uh -huh. oh. So I one time chatted with, uh, joked with my mother. I said, well, people are saying I'm a foreigner, I'm a Congolese, and mm. I said, well, and, mm. I said, it was a common name. She was, my, my mother was seven, uh, two, two sisters and uh, five brothers. So there's, there's only my mother and the immediate uh, uh, younger brother. And uh, we were with Mr. Mulongoti. And my uncle says, yeah, that's, leave to me. Your mother doesn't come in, in that discussion. <laughs> Bring those people who are saying you're a foreigner. Yeah, yeah. Okay? So the way we hammered the rungu, mm on Jonathan Mtawari. Mm. And the way we are sparing this about Sami Chintombwa. Mm. Ish, and so, when we were hammering Lungu about him in Malawan and this and that, and we dug into that. Mm. Well, I was, so I was also made to look at myself. And that's mm. how we brought in Mulongoti's mother. Mm. Uh, Tayari jumped on the bandwagon. Oh, this is my mother. And this is... Mm. Now, here we are. Well, I, I, was, I was meant to respect, okay, not like, maybe it's a stronger word to say you, you admire your, your, your subjects as, as you criticize, as they take. It's just the same way it happens in sports, uh, football. You, so, you the standards, you know, the standards that many people are now asking you, you know, they're asking critics, uh, maybe Laura Mitty, yourself and others, is that how come you seem to have lowered your standard when criticizing President Hakainde Ichilema. For example, you went on the, on the nationality for President Lungu. And uh, the background of the, the current president is, uh, is, uh, is still murky. tipped mm. in Maki. It's not known. He doesn't tell the story himself. No one tells his story. And it's like it's an unspoken yeah. uh, 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 area. And, and this is so a, this Zambians is a... ask, you were very, very strong with Edgar Lungu. There is no subject you didn't spare, whether it was issues of corruption, whether it's issues of police abuse, whether it was his personal life. His marriage, you know, his children. His marriage, his children. You went for everyone. But somehow, are you afraid to criticize?
President Hakainde Ichilema in the same breath you did Edgar Lungu? Well, I have, uh, I have done that. Uh, I've raised those issues. And uh, uh, partly what is different, well, I actually also criticized uh, Sata uh, mm -hmm. so much. And I think I, I remember when Sata was not appearing, I jumped on TV and I said, he must resign. State House is not a state hospice. Mm -hmm. Let him resign. And re then yeah. the... Yeah. Journalists came upon me and said, no, you can't say that. They will kill you. He will mm. cross the station. He said, no. Mm. Mm. So I went yeah, to because sit, at the time, I went to you know, like we are talking about these open secrets. And in the country at the window that the president is unwell. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the PR mechanisms, you know, we spin doctors don't do a good job. They didn't do a good job on the issues around President Michael Satan's illness. They were trying very hard to hide it. Mm -hmm. But the country at the window. Yes. And so that's why people like you then could ask, mm -hmm. where is the president? Mm -hmm. but no, there was also mm. the, the gagging. Like yeah. the way you're saying, right now, what, one of the things that is happening, especially about HH and the, the online culture, there are certain aspects. Well, we are online, as, as I'm, I'm self-aware. Uh, but there's something about the online culture, the issue of dumbing down, yeah. the issue of making people down. The issue of right now, we are just chanting, oh, restructuring, restructuring, restructuring. We can't use the other, the next word, for example, restructuring, is rescheduling. Mm. That's, a, that's the next word. Mm. We would rather use restructure to give it this aura of success. And uh, So <coughs> the, there is something conscious that HH is doing to, to our people, and I listened to a clip on Roramiti talking about, and you could see, well, this is, this is, this, this is, the Constitution provides that the president must be physically and mentally sound. Now, they are just like corruption. Corruption has graduated to a stage where you can call it capture. You don't necessarily call it cap corruption. Mm. It's, a, it's like Africa. it's a culture. Yes, yes. Now, there are certain, uh, what, we, what we tend to think is about uh, uh, mental health is, uh, is Chinama. We, we are still in denial, for example, about mental health that has to do with alcohol, uh, mental health that has to do, for example, with the uh, personality disorders, for example, selfishness. Okay? Just selfishness as a leader, which is also narcissism. That is the, the, the kreptomaniac or kreptomaniac. That is that is a state of mental health. Megalomania is also a state of mental health. For the president has repeatedly been accused of engaging in self-praise. Are you referring to that? Yes, that is, that is a state of... For example, well, I, I think as, we, as, as, as the president has engaged the media four hours and 30 minutes, that's a record. He has combined Manawasa, is it Kaunda, Manawasa, Chiruva, and, and I'm saying, what? That's not normal. That's abnormal. You can't speak for four hours and over lunch, and you are using live media. Now, look, before the president speaks, they cross over, and he's coming late. And you put your wrong, your wrong foot forward. You are late. Media is about time. We went to school, you and I went to school, time. Government, time. Under the PF, Bowman Nusambo was doing the, 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 the late writing, booking, late comers. Chiruwa did that. Now you have the headmaster himself. Over 30 minutes, for example, I criticized Lungu for coming late for press conferences. They took it kindly. This one, eesh, the way they have descended on me. Okay? Lungu. Now, this time is a, is a very important value. Now, if you are going to have, you're, you're not a normal person if you want time to wait for you. No. If you can't keep your weight, again, that is a form of a mental ill health. We need to address those issues. We don't just need, uh, for example, Lungu was doing the physical fitness and so on and so forth and running and, okay? They had also started, like I've told you about the constitution, the PF had started programs. These are supposed to be national programs, okay? 
So the issue of tujirijiri and mental ill health and chamba and so on and so forth, all these uh, drug abuse, right now, energy drinks, we are not speaking into all those things as how to they affect or even just being uh, under Kaloba, Nkongole. We only condemn the PF, but how? The other side, even for example, uh, COVID-19, as we came out of COVID, is it cholera? The Vazungus were talking to those issues as how it affects your mind. Okay? How you can get depressed. There's, there's something that you've touched, which I'm <clears throat> terribly worried about. The young people, the bulk of young people that are falling to drug abuse, alcohol abuse, the Tujilijili couch. I thought it had gone away by ordering bottling in, in, in bigger... I don't know what's happening, but we are losing the youth. Well, we are upgrading. The president first had to go and upgrade uh, is it, uh, Zambia Breweries before he went to a cholera center. Yeah. Zambia Breweries is expanding. Okay? One of the things that took me to Prime TV, uh, well, the, first, the first one was, uh, was uh, the MMD left uh, a certain instrument, number 65 of 2011, to do with SIM registration, which mm. the PF didn't publish, which is the same thing that the PF have left, uh, uh, left the Cyber Bill, or the Cyber, Cyber Act, mm. which the MMD I mean, the, P, the UPND PNB is using. Are enforcing. Yes, yes, are enforcing. So mm. when I went to, uh, to Prime TV, and I had been through the media, that was an environment of, uh, which is 2013-14, an environment of, uh, an environment of uh, uh, change, and the, the Constitution, just because as the PF had come in, the campaign was change the Constitution. Let's change the Constitution. Because the PF band had been blocked. The same way the UPND blocked the PF. Okay, so let's change the constitution. Now, I realize the, the PF had not published the SI and we're enforcing the SI to this very day. And that is how come we gave, uh, we criminally gave our details to Zikta that cannot protect us. Mm -hmm. That's how come the so-called Dejangi can steal Scammers. your smartphone. Exactly. And you're on your own. So when we came from uh, uh, Zita KYC, we should have gone to uh, KYC, which is a... Uh, know your customer. Know your customer. How far have we gone with the uh, KPI, mm. key performance uh, indicator? indicators? Uh -huh. mm. Mm. We have not enforced the key performance indicators about quality and so on. For example, even Zesco. Zesco did the KYC. You recall that, mm. and that's how the meters came. And blah, blah, blah. But the KPI, nothing. Mm. Zesco can do eight hours load shading, and it doesn't go through ERB. And I'm saying, wow. Mm. OK? Mm. So the way, that is how I went to Prime TV. That, then the other one was the issue of the Brazilian hair mm. and the alcohol, the mm. Tujirijiri. That's when they were just coming, and the accidents. So I was so alarmed. Let's start with the Brazilian hair. The Brazilian hair. Uh, has to be preserved with certain dangerous chemicals that our women are not aware of. No. So that human hair we buy from India, from Brazil, from Peru, from where, it has to be preserved under chemicals that you think yes, is not you, disclosed you, to the women. No. And the, the campaign was, what the campaigners were then saying is that for countries that don't have a regulation, the, the percentage of chemicals is much higher. Okay? Uh, the other one was the NH saving bulb. Mm. That the NH saving bulb has mercury. So Yeah, dispose at the end of it is a matter of concern. Yes. After it's, its an lifespan. It's, it's an mm. environmental thing. Zesco was put on the spot and they said, no, the mercury is very little. Yeah, that, that very little is so still dangerous. If you aggregate it in the thousands of bulb distributions. Yes, 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 yes. So those are some of the issues. That and I'm, for the alcohol, we know why. Yes. Uh, and we are the, losing our youth especially. Yes. Mm. And the, for example, I think that is the time that the, the UN produced the statistics that uh, our women had come to the top of uh, Binge drinking because there is the social drinking, and there are two 
let's say two types of drinking. Mm. There's a social drinking where we say, can we meet over a drink in the evening? Or just like the way we are doing, we, we mm. know of water. But in places, other places, you can still, you can still be sipping a beer here and as you are chatting, as you socialize. This is a conversation. It's not an interview. So I yeah. Think I'll take it. Yeah. From. Yeah. So we had graduated from social drinking. We are still not social drinking anymore. At, uh, is it Kunko? Pamsana, the Kabata, The socialization part has gone away. You can see as people are drinking, this, the, 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 the symptoms of, uh, of withdrawal, of alcoholism, mm. manifesting right at the counter. Mm. Okay? So that came about 2011, 20, uh, 2012. That those are the issues that took me to Prime TV. And uh, as you know, I, I also used to cut my hair. And people say, mm -hmm. no, you can't do a campaign like that and you cut your hair. And really, why don't you just, you have already cut that image. That leave the hair like that. And that's how I left the hair. If you're going to make a, a statement on hair. And, you know, oh, that's where your, your Chinua Achebe hair comes from. That is how the <laughs> hair. And uh, well, I already have a type of hair. And I get to learn the many types of hair. And... Uh, different names and so on and so forth. And for me to have hair, uh, can I say this, this yeah. tour and, and uh, as a, as a, as a, as a mwine mukuni lenje mm -hmm. uh, from Lusaka, you need to every time say, I'm lenje from the hair to the toenail, mm -hmm. through the bone marrow, mm -hmm. the thing like that. So, uh, and uh, the senior chief mukuni, the one from, kept teasing me, why do you have hair like that? And I said, how can you be senior chief Mukuni without the hair, <laughs> body? <laughs> and then you'd keep quiet. And every yeah. time I get it, you, why do you have hair like that? Say, no, but a ninja should have hair. Yeah. How do you become yeah. a chief without the hair? Mm. Okay. It was one of the hallmarks. It was one of the... Yes, yeah. yes. Mm. So that is how, that is the 20, that is the environment that took me to... To Prime TV. To Prime TV. Uh, ah. And mm. also the issue of the PF had brought about the issue of uh, uh, local languages schools, mm. in communities, on radio. Uh, so that is how I went to CDC, and then that's how I went to Prime TV. Uh, and carried, that is what I had. So as you are saying... Uh, so why haven't you applied the same spotlight? Uh, before we talk, uh, I know the, your, your, your departure from Prime TV mm -hmm. is, uh, is in court, some, some aspects of it, so we might not speak to that. But why do you think personalities such as yourself, the media, have shied away from criticizing President Hakainde Ichilema? Why do you think he's being spared? No. Is, is he still enjoying the honeymoon? No. What could be the issue? No, no. The, the other thing is that uh, it is not that we are not criticizing. Is he criticizable? That is a question. Mm. Is he criticizable? Is he advisable? Let me give you an <laughs> example. Uh, Lungu fired some ministers and officials out of government, uh, not government pressure, public pressure. Okay? That is how uh, criticizable Lungu was. He mm. could do, take criticism mm. Mm. and take an action. Yeah. How many ministers has HH fired out of just public, public pressure? Criticism. No, he cannot. Okay? So, they are, let me give you another example. Uh, Max Moe once got a phone call from a police officer, a call out to say, come to central police room, so, 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 um, Sergeant Ngurube, or mm. bra, 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 and Alungu. And I got yes, Max Moe came, oh, look, this is what they are doing, this is professional. So I, I put him on a program. Mark, what are you talking about? You mean the police are advanced to doing a, 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 a call out on a phone? He says, yes, I have a call out. This police officer has been, uh, has been stalking me. And what is Give me the number. So he reads the number. And he reads the name of the police officer. The police officer was disciplined. Mm. OK? So he came back to me and said, no. Comrade, you have assisted me. No, this is a police officer is in trouble. They, they called him. Hey, hey, hey. Okay. Uh, now, Maximo calls the police 
Force headquarters, the IG, go and pick Kaseva. <laughs> and what happens? They pick me. Okay? Without the call out. No call out. They mm. bring a call out at the door and they tear it and they, well, they, they, they cancel it and they say, let's go. Can I lock? No, let's go. You're under arrest. Your rights are suspended. What suspends my rights? They don't show me. Okay? So, the PF, uh, interest, there was, there was a, there's, there's a, a niece of mine who is a, a, who is a police officer and she, she told me she had been following me. So we, we met in Kafiwe at a funeral and then she, some people called, hey, come, come, come. And this is your niece, that aunt of yours. And yeah, yeah, yeah that, uh, this is a child. Or oh, is this a cousin of yours? This is a child. And then she says, ooh, I could have killed my uncle. Mm. So that's how she says, uh, you know, I used to follow you on TV. Every day you'd come lungu, 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 and would watch and follow, and he called the, the, the upline and the superiors. Can we go and pick them? And then they also say, no, we are also watching. Mm. We are following. Mm. Okay? And mm. the top is watching. Yeah. Okay, mm. so she says I kept swearing to myself that the day that they will tell us to go and arrest these guys, these critics of government, I will torture this man to death. Mm. So my uncle, I can tell you, please, 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 I would have killed you as my uncle and look what I would have done. Now, we, What's the moral of the story in there? The point, you are asking me mm. that we are not criticizing mm. the HHs. Yeah. We criticize them, but they are not criticizable. They are not advisable. Lungu could be criticized, like I've already told you, he could do certain things. I could criticize Lungu, and even some of the police officers were listening, mm. and he could not release or unleash the police officers on me. And at some point, the UPND kept asking me, but why aren't you arrested? Why? Mm. Okay? So, like you, I am saying, you were also at the receiving end of the criticism. Amos Chanda was at the receiving end of my criticism. Okay? So, I have been criticizing, for example, you are talking about the Prime TV situation. I have been whispering to these guys, uh, even uh, you yourselves, as, as PF, like some people would approach me or to say, no, hey, 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 no, we are friends. There are certain things you tell your friends to, to really not put, to find themselves in an awkward position. For example, so when you say HH is not criticizable, you think that when you criticize it, there will be consequences. Is that what you are saying? Well, that's, that's, that is what has been. That is what has been. Right now, the issue, why, why are we talking about democracy shrinking and dying, and, and which I have also criticized you as politicians to say, you are too much concerned about politics. The issue is human rights. The issue is freedom of the press. But you keep talking about it. The democracy, democracy, and the UQA, and going to elections, and I say, no, 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 no. I've criticized that. Expound, just expound that. That's yeah. very key. So. The, Where do you think they've gone they, wrong on the shrinking of democratic space? Yes, the issue is that, look, I've, I've already said, the engine of uh, the Constitution is a, is a Bill of Rights. This country, as an independent country, let, let, let me start it this way. In 1924, uh, the, the British government took over Northern Rhodesia as a protectorate from the British South Africa Company as a company running as a capture. The company had captured three countries. And the British government was not happy with the way the company was running the, the protectorate. They overthrew Cecil Rhodes' company. You know that story. Yeah. And that is how we got parliament born. Okay? Okaunda is born also then, in 1924. Uh, so, the reason they removed uh, uh, BS, uh, BSSC is the, the violation of human rights. No one will tell you that. 
people were essentially re-enslaved. Uh, you know that story. Mm. Okay? So, there was forced labor, uh, uh, taxes, taxes on poverty. Okay? The, the, which now? It tax, the taxes on poverty and the tax holiday on the profit or uh, company. So we are having a situation. Now, what is happening? 2024, you give back the country, you give back the minerals to the same companies, to the multinational. You get 59% uh, vote, majority vote, and you go and become a minority shareholder <laughs> hundred years own, later. hundred years later. Mm, you are giving these companies back to... Yes, yes, mm. yes. So the issue of uh, human rights, because when you become independent, okay, 1924, uh, 19, which is 40 years later, 64, we, we become self-governing. Now, self-governing -gov also meant the people got... It, it is the bill of rights that changes when you become a nation. And the uh, uh, human rights are individual rights, okay? Like we were talking about uh, this person in John Lang being killed, the other person in... That, that, that life is gone. You cannot say, no, it's a kwafako chabeo Those are some of the shallow arguments you hear from the UPND. No, it's just, uh, oh, this is uh, about... It. No. So the point of... Uh, where I, I, where I'm kind, I don't want to say pissed off by you politicians, is that the discussion is the Bill of Rights. The Bill of Rights. You hijacked, for example, the Constitutional Court, which should have been a human rights court. Mm -hmm. So we have the Human Rights Commission being born from the 1993 itself. So when Ichiruba again freed the country, the pluralism, the, the issue of human rights came at the center. Now here we are, we are talking about debt, but we are not talking about it. Uh, economic human rights, rights economic, and, uh, human rights and economic rights as it, uh, derived from the Constitution. So the Human Rights Commission, the American uh, Embassy, whatever, or Human Rights Report, shows that the UPND human rights record in the first two years is as bad as the PF. If not worse, because they are, they are friends. So we know, like, the way the, 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 the uh, corruption index. Here is the other one. The PF brought us, let's say, for the media, the IBA, they also brought us, uh, they also brought us uh, uh, the financial, uh, financial Intelligence uh, uh, Center as a tool for fighting corruption. And, what, and some of the trends that the Financial Intelligence Center brought about is that the most corrupt sector is politics. Mm. I don't want to criticize your, your former guest, but uh, there's a point that she made. HH has removed the focus from the most corrupt sector being politics, politically exposed persons. The politics right now is the richest sector. What do you produce? Nothing. Exactly. <laughs> so it is a. So how has he removed it? Pardon? How has there, it there's changed? no focus. There's no discussion. Mm -hmm. For example, look at uh, under Manawasa. If you recall, it was not Manawasa who was trending. The auditor general, the, the attorney, uh, no, the auditor general's office was also trending. What have we done now? The the auditor general's office has been disgraced. Yeah. It's been vandalized. Exactly. The, the office order has removed. Exactly. The, so they, say, they, they bring compliant officers and uh, then the focus shifts away from... Just the, like you can see the deliberate defunding. For example, the PF lifted the, the, the Police Public Complaints Commission. They lifted it too. They put it in the Constitution. Now, this is when uh, police crimes... And what is interesting is that... Right now, police are the ones that are featuring as complainants, as, as it happened with HH, and which is something that you, none of you ever, or maybe not none of you, did you notice that 
the, the insults that HH, among the charges for HH, for treason, you have HH charged with treason, and among the, 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 other, the other counts is insulting the arresting officers, and which is also a charge that you have, and which I was, as I looked at the officers picking me, and I was saying, oh, I hope they won't give me the Amos Chanda charges, because mm. it's, it's a copy-paste. Did you mm. notice the insults HH held at the arresting officers are the same insults that Amos Chanda also used on the same You've not noticed that? Mm, 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 mm. I'll, so, take, I'll take interest. Yeah, take interest. But mm. how do the police come in? You and I have also learned something about the occupational hazards. And uh, uh, as I am speaking about Lungu and his reign, and well, I was harassed a few times, but I'll not be like these others to really. That's not the story. Okay? If I'm going to pick a story, the same way that if a police officer is going to pick an arrest, the process of arrest is not part of the charge, okay? So for example, how does a police officer go and hail uh, uh, tear gas in HH's house? And HH should be saying, oh, you're welcome, oh, continue throwing, oh, it's fine, it's good, and... No, he's likely to overreact. Now, the, so look at how the police officer on a duty is going to feature on the on the counts. No. Okay. People may not may not understand what you are saying. For example, the case of Emos Chanda has been accused of um, insulting the police, and you know they, they even sentenced him to seven months. He's out on bail. But what you are saying is the police must have been unprofessional in their conduct that they attracted insults. They, they and they are not, they, they are not, um, they themselves on the, on the stand for the crimes they did, why they attracted the yes, yes. insult. Now, the police mm. are not, for what they did, for example, I'm accused, to, I'm accused of, uh, of uh, uh, having defamed someone. But what were they after? They were after my life. So, my life is equal to someone's fame or character. No, your life That's, is far, far richer than that. Now, that is, that is the UPND kind of uh, equalization or harmonization. Mm, my mm. life, so even, for example, in, in you, okay, this is a, I don't want to call myself a, a white collar, right? because it's journalism white collar. Okay, my crime is white collar. Yeah. I'm using it's, it's conscience and brain and so on. I'm not being physical. For example, I needed to be handcuffed. I'm saying I am feeling weak. I need to go to the clinic. And the police officer says, no, you need to go in the handcuffs. The same way that you did to Amos Chant. What is the nature? So why didn't you put the handcuff on the tongue if mm. his crime is the tongue? Mm. Why do you have to put the handcuff? Or is mm. it, let's call it a tongue cuff. Why didn't you put a tongue cuff? In fact, the larger principle is that freedom of the press, freedom of expression, freedom of conscience should never be criminalized. What you think or what you say should never be criminalized. If people have been, feel offended with what you write, they can then go to a civil court. But in this country, we have, you know, those things we've been campaigning called insult laws, where they are criminalized, where they say you insulted the head of state or you insulted the policeman. No, if someone has been insulted, they can go to a civil court, not using criminal processes, which happens. Why? Because uh, speech, in essence, must never be criminalized, unless in the worst form of it, maybe, you know, hate speech or, or, or the, these new speeches, you know, mm -hmm. by in clerics that could incite terrorism. Yeah, those are the extreme, rare, rare cases in which speech must be criminalized. Yes. But above and door, speech must never, never be cr criminalized. At best, it should go to a civil court. Yes, but if, let's say it is criminalized, as it is, as the case is, mm. but why would you then have to uh, overextend and abuse the law? So for example, well, as, as by the, what the PF left, there's a cyber law. Let's also take what is the position of the UPND and the UPND consultant on 
the Cyber Act. Oh, the now, records are very clear. Yes. First of all, President Akainde Ichilema's government has arrested more people than any other president under criminal defamation of the president before it was uh, repealed. And what the police have done now, now that criminal defamation of the president has been removed, they are now using the Cyber Security mm -hmm. and Cyber mm -hmm. Crimes mm -hmm. Act of 2021. Yes. The very law President Akainde Echilema said he was going to repeal. Mm -hmm. Now, for me, the point I'm making is let's uh, for example, uh, Chamba is still criminalized, but you do not have to plant Chamba on me to abuse the bad law and even to go to the letter or beyond the letter of a bad law. This is a bad law left by the PF, but are you obliged to enforce it? The point we are not addressing is the abuse of an already bad law. Okay? I, for example, I did not refuse to be arrested. I accepted to be arrested, but the police did not arrest me. They instead abducted me. Okay? I did not refuse to be arrested. I wanted to be arrested or even imprisoned. That is fine. As long as it is provided for by the law, even if it is a bad law, we are going to follow the bad law. But they are enforcing their whims. Like I've told you, for 10 years, there is no law against the false publication of false news. It's not there. Yeah, but as the, soon as H the high court, the high court expunged uh, it, expunged to, to that, it. that law. Yes. But, but as uh, soon as HH was elected, who himself survived, benefited out of that uh, repeal by the High Court, he started talking about it. Oh, Nakachinda, oh, false news. Oh, you live, ah, even home, your children. Eh, oh, these are not your children. Come on. So they reinstated what was removed and beyond what it was before. That is what the contention is. Okay? And uh, coming to a, a, a quick matter before we begin to wind up. I bemoan, you know, I think the lack of rigor, proper training, and stature of journalists uh, currently available. We have a big matter, the debt restructure. It just allow me to speak. Under PF, you know, they did what was called debt sustainability analysis with the IMF and World Bank. Why was that done? The IMF and World Bank were saying your debt with China may, may be higher than what you've given us, you know, because PF was uh, under the IMF between 2016 and 2021, and they were trying to get some form of bailout. So they engaged for two years in what is called debt sustainability analysis, where you discover all debt, you list all debt, you put them on the table. After that, then you determine you know, your, your, your debt worthiness. Are you debt distressed? So they came to an agreement that, uh, that indeed Zambia, I think, was threatened with debt distress. And they said, how do we restructure this debt? Government went into an agreement that, okay, with the Chinese debt, we have warm bilateral relations. We will engage, I think by 2020, you saw those announcements, and some even write-offs of debt, $180 million, $40 million, $20 million, including the Levi Mwanawasa Stadium, uh, was, was cancelled under the beginning of a debt restructure between Zambia and China. And then they appointed um, a, a financial analyst firm and uh, a well-known firm called Lazard Ferris from from uh, Paris, France, which I think uh, HH and, his, and the UPN took to town that uh, PF had spent $5 million on Lazard to restructure which debt? The euro bond debt and private debt. So that was the PF's approach, is that with China, our debt, we are going to discuss with them at bilateral level. With the private debt, they hired this firm. Lazard Ferris to restructure the debt. 
Of course, the PF lost elections in 2021. And as usual, with every government, they threw away what was there. And they started a fresh process with the IMF where they allowed now Lazard Ferris with these new bodies, you know, the, uh, 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 the uh, OCC, the Creditors Committee, and the IMF under G20 framework to resolve this debt. So here we are. There's been an announcement that the major debt with China and with bondholders has been done. Why am I bemoaning that there's lack of analysis from our media? Is that, first of all, what we missed with the new process by President Akainde Ichilima was the issue of debt write-off and debt forgiveness, which the PF, in a bilateral engagement they had started with China, even obtained some forgiveness, like the debt on uh, Levi Mwanawasa Stadium, and like some other debts you saw, I think a total of up to $200 million debt was. In this debt restructure, it's actually become expensive for our people. Although it's been rescheduled, like you said, there is no debt forgiveness, there is no debt write-off. There's just a, um, a matter which has been pushed forward. Our people are still have to pay this debt. Yeah. And there's another matter that has not been discussed, where they think that HHS government was doing social programs. Of course, they could do CDF and maybe free education, because the bulk of our budget was intact. No, they were not paying debt from December 2020 to 2023. So they had this financial outlay before them, which was not available to the PF, because for three years, under the G20 agreement, under the debt service, uh, debt service suspension initiative, mm. we had suspended paying our debt, which was ranging from 60%, sometimes to 80% of our national budget was going to debt service. For the last three years, that hasn't been done. Mm -hmm. So I'm bemoaning the issue of uh, quality yeah. analysis. The, the, the press singers have taken over. In fact, when yes. you begin the debate, they'll just say you are bitter. Yes, yes, you, yes. You, 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 you soiled. The, don't discuss yes, it. Not, just praise the church has succeeded. Yes, for, for, for them, for now, uh, I'm actually PF. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Now, for me, there's, there's a case of Mozambique on the, the euro bond. And uh, it has been said that... Uh, uh, these people, uh, the PF especially, were thieves who stole the money. Now, what doesn't get said uh, are people from finance uh, is that, uh, as happened in Mozambique, if the PF stole the money, all you do is you go to the lender and say, this guy you, gave, you lent money to, and that's, that is part of the basis of a negotiation that this is a bad debt. This guy did not bring the money to Zambia. He stole the money. I think that is the... You, you have been following the Mozambique yeah. situation. On the euro bond. On the euro bond in Mozambique, uh, people may not know, there yes. was um, a $2 billion advance to the Mozambican government. But somehow the Minister of Finance yes, didn't I, I, report I, to Parliament. Yes, I, yeah. I, and, I, 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 want, I want the principle, not the details. I want yeah, the, yeah. I, the, I want the principle. So the principle that there is that was that uh, when um, the new president came in, mm -hmm. and I think an audit was done, mm -hmm. and this new debt of $2 billion was discovered. First of all, the lenders are the ones that demanded, in fact, began a process to prosecute the Minister of Finance. The lenders. Yes. They said, we lent you the money. Uh -huh. You didn't surrender it to the state or uh -huh, you abused uh -huh, it. Uh -huh, uh -huh. This is our money. And yes. they began a process in New York where they demanded for the Minister of Finance to be, you know, to be repatriated, yes. you know, yes. uh, extradited yes. to New York. Yes, yes. So I agree with the principle yes. you're trying to yes. state. Yes, that, that is the principle. It's, yeah. a, it's, a, it's a basic principle that if PF store the money, we go and tell the lenders, PF store the money, and that is the basis for negotiation of debt cancellation. Yeah. Okay? As simple as that. Mm. Now, the UPND have been saying here, PF store the money, they never go to Washington, they never go to Beijing, China, to say, Munapasa waka walara, Munapasa mwankore, Munapasa mashori, wanazi bandrama. That is part of a debt relief negotiation. The same way that COVID-19 has been factored in, and the UPND will never give it to PF to say, well, you went through a bad time, 
and the, uh, that is what has it, uh, that has necessitated, that is a benefit uh, of, of, I mean, the, it, it benefits you in your negotiation. They never say that. So, uh, in fact, for the first time I heard the president say we've had bad crises at Inchwala, <laughs> you heard him. We, have, we had COVID-19. I said, ah, now you agree. COVID was a was national a crisis. crisis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then we have had cholera outbreaks, anthrax, you know, and these other outbreaks. Mm -hmm. I'm asking God, what have I done, God? Yes. So, so I, it, it was very funny that he acknowledged um, uh, 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 the COVID-19 during politicking. Yes. But that question, let me answer it, even when you are supposed to answer it, on debt, why they lie to the Zambians that the PF stopped? And like you are saying, when they go to negotiators, they agree this was a national debt. It's very simple. The debt of the patriotic front, you can pin every coin to a project. You can say, they borrowed $400 million, you find it at the Kenneth Kaunda International Airport. They will say, they borrowed $350 million, you find it at Simon Mwansaka Pueblo. You hear that they borrowed $2.1 billion, you find it at Kafio Lower Gorge. Their debt, the PF, can be tabulated to a school, to a road. They borrowed $280 million for Lusaka roads from India. You will find the roads and the flyover bridges. With our colleagues, like I'm saying, we're not having sober conversations yeah, in but, this country. Yeah, yeah, which is... That the UPND, for example, is borrowing. And no one is putting them to task. That, look, the opposition are saying you have borrowed $6 billion. Mm. The opposition are demonstrating how you have borrowed this $6 billion. Mm -hmm. Where have you spent it on? Mm -hmm. They will never answer yeah, that. Yeah, and which is where I'm saying, I don't want to put it on journalists. Yeah. Uh, these are only young people that are looking for jobs, and as, as you saw, uh, well, this, this government is also anti, uh, clearly anti-media. It's very oppressive. Yeah. Yes, it's very oppressive. The media has been compromised uh, well, with, the, with jobs. And as you can see that, uh, and part of it is uh, the frustration, uh, and which is what people want to tell me that uh, I'm actually looking for a job by criticizing. So I'm saying, well, I don't think. Uh, criticism is a function of the media that I learned in journalism school. So if you have to employ me, employ me as a critic, not to shut me, and then you give me a job as a way of, uh, as a way of silencing me. So the... The way this, this government is, like I've, I've just raised one principle on the issue of uh, the debt. Right now, there's this ch chanting that is going about, about restructuring, uh, which of course also happened, because we, which, let's not also forget, for example, the person who brought the euro bonds is the, the same current finance minister. The PF inherited the euro bonds from the MMD. So the issue of the nation borrowing started with the Stumbeko Musoko Twani, the current finance minister. So when we start to argue of whether the debt was sustainable or not, we are removing uh, who initiated the borrowing. In fact, for me, I've been very critical. You know, when we graduated in 2010, the economy was doing very well. We graduated as a low middle income country. It was an initiative of the IMF that um, you have done so well that you can contract private debt. Twelve countries, among them Zambia, and Zambia, were picked. Honorable Msokotwane, under which this was achieved, must come to the nation and inform them that in fact the decision to go to private lenders and Eurobond was not the initiative of the Zambian government. It was the IMF. And not the PF. Let's no, no, it wasn't even uh -huh. for the that PF the, because there, there's been an, uh, an issue like uh, the PF were reckless. Yes. In fact, it was an issue of the IMF who stated that now you are doing better. You are a low middle income countries. You remember even some embassies like the Danish embassies, Swedish embassies and others even, not Swedish, but Danish embassies that were very involved with the poor, said you are no longer our client because you are now a low middle income. And they closed here and they moved to Zimbabwe where you know, Zimbabwe had not graduated. So the issue of going to the market was never an issue of the PF government. Honorable Msokotwane would be best to tell this story. 
to tell them, no, we now graduated, and the IMF now are experimenting with this. And 12 countries in Africa, yeah. including Seychelles and others, were picked. And we went, if you see the first people that got their euro bond, uh, the 12 countries, Ghana, Seychelles and others, we are all had graduated from low middle income, I mean, from poor island-dated countries to low middle income. And they, they sent us to the wolves. We didn't go to the wolves ourselves. Yes. We were comfortable with borrowing with the IMF. Yes. Now, for me, the point there is uh, that uh, we need to put these matters in perspective. That yeah. is one, that the players, for example, one of the finance ministers or the second finance minister for PF is in cabinet. So Felix Mutati. Felix Mutati. Nothing is said of, of him. Now, the other point I want to make is that when these things were happening, and I mean the media is about news and going forward and so on, analysis is all putting that together, the past and the... Now, the, when these things were happening, it is also very important to go back to the records of, for example, what HH said then. Because we tend to underplay as much as you want the critic to criticize you. You should also exercise self-criticism. What did HH say then, and what is HH saying now? That is also very critical in how we look at uh, uh, these matters that affect, uh, that affect the nation. We are not having a conversation of this. For example, we are, we, are, we, are, we are talking about the debt. And as I, can I attack you as a politician? Yeah. This is all political. I, I don't want the... Uh, you know, you and I, as journalists, we need to dejagonize this. But HH is known for jargon and to is it intellectual bully people to show them they are DAO. I think that that is. Or if people are hungry, it means they don't understand the things. Or they don't work hard. Yes, they don't work hard. They are lazy. Or they, they believe in it and tamani and things mm. like that. Okay? So people have been... Uh, gaslighted, blackmailed, manipulated. So you can't blame them so much. Uh, we, we need to free ourselves. We thought we freed ourselves from the PF, and yet it got worse, and we cannot speak. Because we, we put the PF in, in, in office in the first place. Okay, That is the blackmail that is happening, and that is what I am seeing as a problem right now, and which perhaps even the PF, and, and, I, and I see... You, you as PF, not using the advantage of government or understanding government over the UPND, sometimes you just watch them as, as, as they make clear, deliberate mistakes. For example, you yourself, you know, people can't die of cholera that we had gone through uh, for many years and the PF was able to I, I actually criticized the PF. A baby, six months old, died in Kanyama, I think in 2017. And I said, a baby who is not in charge of herself is going to die of cholera. This is an indictment on, on us as society. And even, even then, I even criticized the PF on the matter that you are talking about, Prime TV being closed and so on, and being, me being in court. I criticized the PF because you know professionally, as a journalist, that when there is a national disaster, we are supposed to go, we belong to the state. We are public workers who should help the state. And when Prime TV could even stand up to the state and have a standoff for three weeks, challenge the PF, and then someone is going to say, oh, the PF closed the prayer. This was to do with COVID-19, which was a disaster. And I've been telling people that uh, he was even lucky that he was not arrested. Because Boma Nelsambo and Chitaru Chirufia were arresting people. So how could someone go against the emergency regulations and be spared? Now, my, my criticism of the PF is that the UPND goes to do or makes Korela a worse disaster than COVID, and you say nothing, the president rewards the volunteer workers and does nothing for those who died. And you're telling me, oh, Article 12, we have repealed this and all. People In can fact, take you know, class just, action. Just, yeah, yeah, just to tell you there, before you finish, 
is that you are critical of a um, six months old baby dying of cholera. Under the last cholera, it's been the worst outbreak in this yes, country. Yes, and that is the point where I'm... Over 700 lives were lost. Yes, Over 20,000 yes, yes. were affected. Yes. It's such a tragic period. With the experience... And, and we have missed it. We have missed it. 700 lives lost. 20,000 no, affected. But, no, can I come in? The point I'm making, yeah. you as PF, those people are entitled to a class action. You need to assist these people to sue the government. That negligence is unacceptable. Okay? So you know that. For example, people talk about the PF for firing people or retiring people. I said the PF also allowed the people to sue the state, and they won, and they were reinstated. Why do you think the, the UPND has not published the loose, the loose uh, Mungomba, uh, that survey they did, the uh, cabinet appointed someone from cabinet office to do a survey on all the people that were uh, dismissed and retired and so on and so forth. You know that. Why is the UPND quiet on the findings of, of, of that uh, inquiry? No, the findings were very clear. Yes. They interviewed over... 2,000 yes. people that claimed that they were yes. dismissed unfairly or were retired in national interest. And under 180 were reinstated because the bulk of the cases were genuine and on merit. And people were fired for genuine disciplinary or fraud or theft cases. Yet so, they lied. So, so, they, so imagine out of a list of 2,000 workers, only 180 were reinstated by a commission yes. appointed by itself. In fact, there is another criticism. If people like Mr. Fanwo Siandenge was put through the commission, he would not have been reinstated because the standards in the civil service are quite high. Yes. So now that is why, what I'm saying. You as PF, you understand that. Never have you ever spoken, for example, for what is happening to me, as where someone cannot even remit NAPSA. Or how some of us... We have no recourse. It's the same person who is going to even sue me for resigning. And the PF is watching. Like you, the, the, the figure that you are giving, 93%, only 7% fell under that, uh, that category that you could say... Could be reinstated. Uh, uh, no, mm. could, do, could, could have been unfairly. Treated. So mm. that whole commission cleared the people. Okay. The same way, here is this, the other one. There was a commission of inquiry on voting pattern and electoral violence, which brought out the PF was violent just as the UPND was violent in its stronghold. But you are going to tell me, oh, someone ended the uh, Kada violence and brought peace and the rule of law. And I said, no, read that. Okay. This is what I tell Zambians, that the UPND actually was more violent than the PF. Yes. But of course the measure and standard was different because, you know, the PF were in government and were, were yes. therefore and expected to rein in. But in fact, records show that the UPND were more violent than the PF. Just like the president can never mention the name Jackson Kungo. Yeah. He will only mention people that are strictly... UPND cadres. Yeah. There were cadres that were killed. No, okay, people are not cadres when they are killed. There were people that were killed in Kanyama. Yeah, the two youths yes. that uh, were killed just before elections. Yes. Yeah. Do you, By have, UPND their, do you have their names? Yes, no, we no, do. No, I mean, the, do, do we have their names in public domain? Yeah. No, 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 no. They are not in public domain. No, they from, are just from, because President HH has only popularized yes, his list. Yes, and you are right. Yes, we have not popularized yes. our list. Now it is not for you to compete. Mm. Just like mm. I'm not going to compete that. Oh, I was arrested. I was detained. For, mm. No, you don't have been. Uh, how many times have I been detained? I will not keep that count. Okay, I will not keep that count. That uh, well, I went on a hunger strike. That's not the story. Mm. Okay, but the point I'm making is that you as PF. You are not bringing out, oh, this is Bill 10, and this is the, 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 the Bill 10 which was put on top of the, 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 the what? Which is the, the Bill of Rights, okay? Which was meant to correct and reinsert. So we have the Constitution of 96, and here it is, the, 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 the 16 one, is not even yet bound into a book. This one is a book. It's a complete book, the one children were left. 
The UPND doesn't want, and you as politicians don't want to complete the, the, the constitutional making process to make human rights the top agenda. You can never be discussing debt as you politicians and arguing uh, to the exclusion of the citizens. Okay? So if you are telling me this has been restructured, this is 20 years, the UPND won't be there. HH won't be there. So PF borrows for UPND to pay, and UPND reschedules. To and another government. Is it Tayari to, to pay? Or government. is it Kasonde Mwenda or Membe to pay? That is the discussion we must be having. Have the people sanctioned that? Okay? Have the people agreed? These are matters that should be uh, brought to a, a referendum. The PF took debt to parliament to say, well, this must go. So there are so many things and good things. I'm not saying the PF should be the ones to talk about the good things that they have done. But they should also be able to say some of the bad things that are being done but are being made to look good. That is what the UPND has done. That is the manipulation, the blackmail, the gaslighting that we, the, the UPND has tended to play and has been allowed to play victim and play the PF even in defeat, even in opposition as the villain. And the people that may sound to not even accept the PF, or just to just say, oh, or even where the president says, oh, go and wear your regalia. Now it is coming out, he wants them to wear their regalia. Not that he is interested in the PF. He knew that, he, for example, he knows you don't, you're not supposed to do campaigns before the, the electoral commission uh, period. But he's the one who keeps it, that, which is lawlessness. He's the one who says, go and wear your, uh, your regalia. So, he knew, we all knew, the ECL 2021 number plate was wrong. But isn't, isn't that happening in a, in a different form? Someone was just updating me, oh, do you know all those vehicles that HH had and they're on the road and no number plates, no nothing and, okay? So even, so when the PF, like even when, uh, so HH is going to say, no VX, he goes to a meeting and he says, no VX. And one day, as I, I, I was in Woodlands, and no VX, and here he comes. In his VX, numerous. And the PF are saying nothing. No, no international trips. We condemned Lungu. For example, Lungu observed the travel ban he imposed on himself uh, during COVID, that Lungu should have had no trips for almost the last two years. Now look at how HH moved, uh, traveled abroad. In the last two years, in the meantime, he just says, no, this plane, this is extravagance, this is corruption. The, mo moving the president is the cost, it's not the plan. So the PF never says anything like that. Even for you to help the media to say, the delegation of the president is information obtainable at the cabinet, you are not doing that as PF, okay? Inf that information doesn't need the access to information bill. That is... What is the delegation? The president is using uh, adjectives, lean delegation. No, 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 let's put numbers to it. How let's many see how people? Lean it is. Yes. Mm. It is us to say, oh, this is delegation. Is lean. Is lean. Or is big. Uh -huh. mm. Or even uh, what we adopted under Lungu and the campaign was it by uh, virtual. Why isn't the president, why didn't the president carry on what Lungu had started? by doing all these virtual meetings and Zoom meetings. Why, why is he traveling? Why is he traveling? Okay? So the PF has not been any, any, no, any, I accept any helpful. The, I accept the, like, the uh, criticism like, that we, we, the PF, and generally the opposition must do more. For the people, yeah, not for yourself. Of, of, of for the people, the people not for... We must provide the checks and balances. We recognize the atmosphere yeah. is probably more tyrannical than under, you know, when you were operating. Like you were saying. No, no, no. For the media, as tyrannical as it gets, that's when the media gets free. That's one yeah. point. Mm. For example, as I went to Kawata, I found people that were detained with you, as mm. you know. Yeah. Ah, okay? Yeah. And there are people that have done over four months in detention with the president saying police bond. And the IG answers back and says, no, uh, the sureties, it's not a surety bond, mm. it is a police bond, it is the police that should tell me you have such a right. 
Okay? The IG is in insubordination. Yeah. If the president, even to, for example, for you, you are more concerned about rallies. People are being arrested who have no names, who will not be visited by uh, Mr. Mm -hmm. Mamba, who will not be visited by Mr. Sean Tembo. I left them there. The system has continued and has gotten worse. Mm -hmm. And you are saying nothing. I've heard you admit the PF made mistakes. But you don't go further to say, uh, I think yeah, you grew up in the same time, that it's not a mistake to make a mistake, but it's yeah. a mistake. To repeat the mistake. Exactly. Never have I ever heard the PF say that. Mm -hmm. To say, we made mistakes. Don't repeat a mistake. PF made a mistake. Let's, let's, we, we criticize them. You're making mistakes. They answered back. But UBND is repeating, repeating, consciously repeating mistakes. So it's not a mistake. Once you repeat it, it's called a decision. So you people are not, uh, are not, uh, are not helping the people. For me, it is. Thank you for the it's, criticism. It's the, it's the media. Kaseba, we will, the, we will up human our rights. games. I think um, we, we need... And this government has been under a honeymoon, but it's been two and a half years. They are midway, midstream through their governance. Which, which was last month. Now yeah. It's, it's one, yeah. So one they are in now in there, literally going to their third year. They should not be spared. I think they should be put up to. We should shine the light on them so we see the mistakes and the so-called achievements. You know, you and I can sit here discussing the whole day. We may not discuss four hours like a church, but we can be here yes, it's a for, 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 for a long time. And this brings me to an issue. I might have to bring you back on issues, especially to do with um, uh, freedom of the press, freedom of expression, freedom of the media, and human rights components. I think uh, we, we shouldn't fight for isolated rights. It should be all. If we're fighting for democracy, we're fighting for human rights, it should be all. So what are your last words, Kasava? Well, I, I appreciate uh, the invitation and the visit. And uh, like I said, some of them recognized you and they listed other people that have gone through and have left them. And uh, so uh, this, is, this is very, very important. And as an initiative, uh, of, uh, as, as, a, as, a, as a podcast, the, the podcast initiative and the conversation, uh, that is what we kind of have been lacking because we are more into breaking news, which uh, social media has taken over from, uh, uh, from uh, uh, mainstream media. So uh, what uh, mainstream media is suffering from is not just, uh, it's not just the politics. It is also suffering from uh, the competition of, uh, of, uh, of, of, of uh, the new media, as in... Uh, uh, social media. So, what uh, this government has been, as in, uh, we have a minister of, uh, of information and media uh, as a change from what it was for all these years. Uh, similarly, we have uh, a director at the State House uh, as opposed to a special assistant for press and public yes, relations. as it had been all these years. Then when you get to look at uh, uh, what instruments they are using, before we look at the people that are in those offices and before we can place our expectations and look at, measure the UPND by its promises. Uh, the people in, in those offices have essentially been a step down. Uh, we, we have the access to information bill, which I'm telling you, here is the Manakatwe report that first raised the access to information bill, and which also, oh, by the way, which was supported by the, by the uh, Commission of Inquiry on Voting Patterns, and uh, it also supported that. And it also actually even uh, mandated another commission, a transition commission, which would have been called the Peace Commission or the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, which HH should have appointed if he read that report. Okay? So, uh, that, the, that, that is a, what is on the table, what the president found as 
the media is concerned. He has departed. He is the one who has gone backwards. So when you talk about the rule of law, which is constitutionally provided for, which is part of what the president does in it, being sown in, you are sown in, it's part of the oath to uphold the rule of law. That's what you are sown in. So it can't be, there's no genius that can bring the rule of law. Okay? So there are all these things that they are playing with people's minds. So the way social media has, has taken over, it's, it's, it doesn't, it's, it's propagandistic. It doesn't inform you. It gets to change your mind. So the battle has been like, I'm telling you, that the UPND is, is, uh, is influencing people to take wrong as right. Okay? You have wrong things where the president, for example, tells a lie. You get the text, it's written, it's still on his Facebook page. They attack you for saying this guy is a liar. Uh, Marupenga's book says this guy is a liar. Achiruba said that. Uh, Ismanawasa said that. Uh, Achiruba said that. This guy is a liar. There are many people that have shown us this guy is a liar. I mean, the guy as HH is a liar. So, that is what the media is called out to do also. Your, your story must have uh, those attributes of uh, facts. So when someone tells a lie, it should not just be easy to call Mwamba a liar and not to call HH a liar. So there's a way that uh, these people have, uh, have uh, really taken away those rights and they make it look like, the same way I've told you, that it's okay for HH to be impunctual. To hell with time. It's okay for HH not to keep his word. To hell with the uh, written text. Okay? It's okay for HH to travel across this, to hell with the costs. That is what they have uh, changed people's minds, taken advantage of the youths. Okay? If you are beaten by, if the way I was abducted by the UPND, it's not, it's not, it's, it's not wrong, it's right. Okay? The PF who had just reformed called the, the police as a service, they have gone back to a force. It's okay. So that is what the issue of the minds, the human rights, freedom of expression. You've seen the, 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 the Miss Zambia, USAID. The president said, told ambassadors, don't speak through the press. Guard ambassadors. It's okay. And yet, I can tell you, at Prime TV, we had the American ambassador, we had all these other people that could come and criticize. So we have lost. It is so far so bad. You cannot be allowed to say even that. You can't complain to say things are getting worse. I can tell you that right now, as, as I was going through, I'm an, in, an internal exile. This, it's just that I'm being a, pat a patriot. Um, that I can't cross the border. Zambia is worse than what it was, but we are not allowed to say that. Okay? You can't say that. Even I, being arrested, being detained, abducted and detained, still doesn't qualify to say that. There's a boy who, who I mean, people came online to tell me, uh, no, you weren't abducted. I was saved, no paper. Okay? A Kada, not even Kaisers who did what he, Max Nue has done. A Kada can order the IG to send officers to pick me. You find me home, I agree. And so I'm giving you an example, because if I speak of other people, you say, no, mukambachabe, mumuzuachani. Now I'm giving you my own example how things are getting worse and how they are gagging, how people are being killed and dying like chickens, they will turn uh, a blind eye to that. No names, no acknowledgement. The president first went to Zambian breweries to launch the expansion of Zambian breweries before he could go to a cholera center. You know that story. And give jobs to the volunteers. And nothing to the people that lost their beloved one. Okay? 
negligently, people were left to die, and yet under the PF, who were talking about it. Well, that is still justiciable. That is still justiciable, as much as these people, as obstructionists who blocked it, don't want to agree that those people should be compensated. Those people who died during the cholera uh, epidemic, cholera is preventable, treatable, and well, it's first, yeah, preventable, treatable, and, and curable. And yet people died in numbers that they have never died before. So for me, that is one of the things that uh, before we reach political rights and so on and so forth, let's, let's deal with the human rights. Let's deal... Because even the media derives from human rights. Expression derives from human rights. Media derives from expression. All those derive from human rights. So that is, that is what it is for me, as, uh, as I appreciate that you have given me the freedom to express myself or to converse as conversation is dying uh, because of uh, certain labels, like you have said, the uh, insults, the hatred, and so on that are, that are being used. We, we, we need this, that people express themselves, that we enjoy, we start with life, and enjoy there are additional freedoms. Thank you very much. Kaseba, Kaseba Mashila, a veteran journalist, critic, uh, political analyst, media analyst, and activist, um, was recently detained, as you heard, abducted and detained for many, many days. In fact, he was only released because he had engaged in um, a hunger strike, in fact, that threatened his life. Um, that's why I'd like to thank you for sparing an opportunity and continue to do what you do best. It's not for yourself, it's for our country. And sometimes our lives are on the line for speaking for our country. And then our country, I think, will continue to appreciate you. Um, so to our dear viewers, until next time and until I have another special guest, we hosted Kaseba, Kaseba Mashila today. God bless our country. God bless you and God bless Zambia. Shalom, shalom.